I like decision trees. How about you, StatQuest? Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to StatQuest. Today, we're going to talk about decision and classification trees, and they're going to be clearly explained. Here is a simple decision tree. If a person wants to learn about decision trees, then they should watch this stack quest. In contrast, if a person does not want to learn about decision trees, then check out the latest Justin Bieber video instead. In general, a decision tree makes a statement and then makes a decision based on whether or not that statement is true or false. It's no big deal. When a decision tree classifies things into categories, it's called a classification tree. And when a decision tree predicts numeric values, it's called a regression tree. In this case, we're using diet to predict a numeric value for mouse size. Note, for the remainder of this video, we are going to focus on classification trees. However, if you want to learn more about regression trees, fear not. There's a whole stack quest dedicated to regression trees. The link is in the description below. Now, here's a more complicated classification tree. It combines numeric data with yes-no data. So it's okay to mix data types in the same tree. Also, Notice that the tree asks about exercising multiple times, and that the amount of time exercising isn't always the same, so numeric thresholds can be different for the same data. Lastly, the final classifications can be repeated. For the most part, classification trees are pretty easy to work with. You start at the top, and work your way down, and down, until you get to a point where you can't go any further, and that's how you'll classify something. Note, so far I've been labeling the arrows with true or false, but usually it is just assumed that if a statement is true, you go to the left, and if a statement is false, you go to the right. So, sometimes you see true and false labels, sometimes you don't. It's no big deal. Oh no, it's the dreaded terminology alert. The very top of the tree is called the root node, or just the root. These are called internal nodes, or branches. Branches have arrows pointing to them, and they have arrows pointing away from them. Lastly, these are called leaf nodes, or just leaves. Leaves have arrows pointing to them, but there are no arrows pointing away from them. Bam. Now that we know how to use and interpret classification trees, let's learn how to build one from raw data. This data tells us whether or not someone loves popcorn, whether or not they love soda, their age, and whether or not they love the 1991 blockbuster Cool as Ice, starring Vanilla Ice. So we will use this data to build this classification tree that predicts whether or not someone loves cool as ice. Now, pretend you've never seen this tree before. And let's see how to build a tree starting with just data. The first thing we do is decide whether loves popcorn, loves soda, or age should be the question we ask at the very top of the tree. To make that decision, We'll start by looking at how well Love's Popcorn predicts whether or not someone loves cool as ice. To do this, we'll make a super simple tree that only asks if someone loves popcorn. And then we'll run the data down the tree. For example, the first person in the data set loves popcorn. So they go to the leaf on the left. And because they do not love cool as ice, We'll keep track of that by putting a 1 under the word no. The second person in the dataset also loves popcorn, so they also go to the leaf on the left. And because they also do not love cool as ice, we increment no to 2. The third person does not love popcorn. 
so they go to the leaf on the right. And because they love cool as ice, we put a one under the word yes. Likewise, we run the remaining rows down the tree, keeping track of whether or not each one loves cool as ice. Bam. Now let's do the exact same thing for love soda. Looking at the two little trees, we see that neither one does a perfect job predicting who will and who will not love cool as ice. Specifically, these three leaves contain mixtures of people that do and do not love cool as ice. Drat. It's another terminology alert. Because these three leaves all contain a mixture of people who do and do not love cool as ice, they are called impure. In contrast, this leaf only contains people who do not love cool as ice. Because both leaves in the Love's popcorn tree are impure, and only one leaf in the Love's soda tree is impure, it seems like Love's soda does a better job predicting who will and who will not love cool as ice. But it would be nice if we could quantify the differences between Love's popcorn and Love's soda. The good news is that there are several ways to quantify the impurity of the leaves. One of the most popular methods is called genie impurity, but there are also fancy-sounding methods like entropy and information gain. However, numerically, the methods are all quite similar, so we will focus on genie impurity since, not only is it very popular, I think it is the most straightforward. So let's start by calculating the genie impurity for Love's Popcorn. To calculate the genie impurity for Love's Popcorn, we start by calculating the genie impurity for the individual leaves. The genie impurity for the leaf on the left is 1 minus the probability of yes squared minus the probability of no squared. So we start out with 1. Then we subtract the squared probability of someone in this leaf loving cool as ice, which is 1, the number of people in the leaf who loved cool as ice, divided by the total number of people in the leaf, 4. And then the whole term is squared. Lastly, we subtract the squared probability of someone in this leaf not loving cool as ice, which is 3, the number of people in the leaf who did not love cool as ice, divided by the total number of people in the leaf, squared. And when we do the math, we get 0 0.375. So let's put 0 0.375 under the leaf on the left so we don't forget it. Now let's calculate the genie impurity for the leaf on the right. Just like before, we start out with 1, then we subtract the squared probability of someone in this leaf loving cool as ice and the squared probability of someone in this leaf not loving cool as ice. And when we do the math, we get 0 0.444. Now, because the leaf on the left has four people in it and the leaf on the right only has three people in it, the leaves do not represent the same number of people. Thus, the total genie impurity is the weighted average of the leaf impurities. We start by calculating the weight for the leaf on the left. The weight for the left leaf is the total number of people in the leaf, 4, divided by the total number of people in both leaves, 7. Then we multiply that weight by its associated genie impurity, 0.375. Now we add the weighted impurity for the leaf on the right, which is the total number of people in the leaf, 3, divided by the total number of people in both leaves, 7, times the associated genie impurity, 0 0.444. And when we do the math, we get 0 0.405. So the genie impurity for Love's Popcorn is 0 0.405. Likewise, the genie impurity for Love Soda is 0 0.214. Now we need to calculate the genie impurity for age. However, 
Because age contains numeric data, and not just yes, no values, calculating the Gini impurity is a little more involved. The first thing we do is sort the rows by age, from lowest value to highest value. Then we calculate the average age for all adjacent people. Lastly, we calculate the Gini impurity values for each average age. For example, to calculate the Gini impurity for the first value, we put age less than 9.5 in the root. And because the only person with age less than 9.5 does not love cool as ice, we put a 0 under yes and a 1 under no. Then, everyone with age greater than or equal to 9.5 goes to the leaf on the right. Now we calculate the Gini impurity for the leaf on the left and get 0. And this makes sense because every single person in this leaf does not love cool as ice. So there is no impurity. Then we calculate the Gini impurity for the leaf on the right and get 0 0.5. Now we calculate the weighted average of the two impurities to get the total Gini impurity. And we get 0 0.429. Likewise, we calculate the Gini impurities for all of the other candidate values. These two candidate thresholds, 15 and 44, are tied for the lowest impurity, 0 0.343. So we can pick either one. In this case, we'll pick 15. However, remember that we are comparing Gini impurity values for age, loves popcorn, and loves soda to decide which features should be at the very top of the tree. Earlier, we calculated the Gini impurity values for Love's Popcorn and Love's Soda. And now we have the Gini impurity for Age. And because Love's Soda has the lowest Gini impurity overall, we know that its leaves have the lowest impurity. So we put Love's Soda at the top of the tree. Bam! Now, the four people that love soda go to a node on the left, and the people that do not love soda go to a node on the right. Now let's focus on the node on the left. All four people that love soda are in this node. Three of these people love cool as ice, and one does not. So this node is impure. So let's see if we can reduce the impurity by splitting the people that love soda based on love's popcorn or age. We'll start by asking the four people that love soda if they also love popcorn. Because two of the four people that love soda also love popcorn, they end up in the leaf on the left. The remaining two people that love soda but do not love popcorn end up on the right and the total Gini impurity for this split is 0 0.25. So let's put 0 0.25 here so we don't forget. Now we test different age thresholds just like before. Only this time, we only consider the ages of people who love soda. And age less than 12.5 gives us the lowest impurity, 0, because both leaves have no impurity at all. So let's put 0 here. Now, because 0 is less than 0 0.25, we will use age less than 12.5 to split this node into leaves. Note, these are leaves because there is no reason to continue splitting these people into smaller groups. Likewise, this node, consisting of the three people who do not love soda, is also a leaf because there is no reason to continue splitting these people into smaller groups. Now there is just one last thing we need to do before we are done building this tree. We need to assign output values for each leaf. Generally speaking, the output of a leaf is whatever category that has the most values. In other words, because the majority of the people in these leaves do not love cool as ice, the output values are, does not love cool as ice. 
And because the majority of the people in this leaf love cool as ice, the output value is loves cool as ice. Hooray! We finished building a tree from this data. Double bam! Now, if someone new comes along, and we want to predict if they will love cool as ice, then we run the data down our tree. And because they love soda, they go to the left. And because they are 15, so age less than 12.5 is false, they end up in this leaf. And we predict that they will love cool as ice. Triple bam! Okay, now that we understand the main ideas of how to build and use classification trees, let's discuss one technical detail. Remember, when we built this tree, only one person in the original dataset made it to this leaf. Because so few people made it to this leaf, it's hard to have confidence that it will do a great job making predictions with future data. And it is possible that we have overfit the data. Note, if the term overfit is new to you, don't, don't, don't freak, freak out. out. Instead, check out the stat quest on bias and variance in machine learning. Regardless, in practice, there are two main ways to deal with this problem. One method is called pruning, and there's a whole stat quest dedicated to it, so check it out. Alternatively, we can put limits on how trees grow, for example, by requiring three or more people per leaf. Now we end up with an impure leaf, but also a better sense of the accuracy of our prediction, because we know that only 75% of the people in the leaf loved cool as ice. Note, even when a leaf is impure, we still need an output value to make a classification. And since most of the people in this leaf love cool as ice, that will be the output value. Also note, when we build a tree, we don't know in advance if it is better to require three people per leaf or some other number. So we test different values with something called cross-validation and pick the one that works best. And if you don't know what cross-validation is, check out the quest. Bam. Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!